Hey friends, after 11 years living in Denmark, I have finally become a Danish citizen. And in today's video, I want to tell you exactly why would you be interested in applying potentially uh, to become a Danish citizen and then the step access process you need to go through again to apply. Why would you want to become a Danish citizen? I'll divide this into two points. First, if you are not a European citizen, by having Danish citizenship, you again get access to European citizenship. Beyond the value, of course, that we're going to get into a second of having Danish citizenship, having European citizenship is basically the ultimate life hack there is in the world at the moment. So you basically get that right to live and work in all 27 EU countries. So if you want to work in Denmark first, but then in France, Slovenia, Romania, you name it, you basically get the right to live and work in all those countries. And that's fantastic. If you don't have this right, and if you need to basically do all the paperwork whenever you want to move between countries, this is a godsend. And it's again, a very, very important thing. But if you are already a European citizen, and for example, I'm myself an Italian citizen, why would you want to become Danish as well? So I see this as two main reasons. The first one is that there's literally no downside. Before you had to give up your other citizenship to become Danish, but now you don't. So you can basically like keep being Italian as I am now and then at the same time add Denmark to that. And then by being a Danish citizen, you don't have literally more obligations than what you had before. You don't need to join the army. You don't need to pay more in taxes or whatever. So of course you have a more sense of responsibility to Denmark. You have more skin in the game, you could say, of being Dane, and that's a good thing as well. But it doesn't translate that you need to do actively something that before you didn't. And then there's some problems also as well to get a Danish citizenship. The first one and most important you could say is that you get the, finally the right to vote for parliamentary elections. So you can actually vote for the parliament. You can vote for the most important elections in Denmark. Before, as a permanent residence, you could vote in municipal elections, regional elections, but not for the parliament. And that's important. And beyond that, there's always some rules and regulations that even though as a EU citizen, you have basically almost the same rights as a Dane, there's still this almost. And there's, for example, a five-year rule in housing, which I'll link over here if you're interested, that basically like no downside, some upside, why not, right? How you then become a Danish citizen? There's five main requirements. One, you need to fulfill the residence requirements. In order to become a Dane, you need to have lived in Denmark uninterruptedly for the last nine years. So of course you can go on holidays and you can go out to the country for a month or two, but every time you have been out of the country for more than three months straight in just one chunk, you need to justify it. So for example, it could be that you got stationed abroad for like a year or two with a company that is Danish, okay, maybe you can get an exception, but otherwise you need to have lived here uninterruptedly for nine years by the time you apply. And of course, this is, there's some exceptions and there's some caveats, but this is what applies for most people. If you are a refugee, then you, instead of being nine years, it's eight years. If you're married to a Dane, that's like six to eight years instead of, again, the whole nine years. And it also depends on how long you have been married and so on. And if you're another Nordic citizen, for example, if you're from Sweden or from Norway, instead of having to wait for nine years, you can do it in two years. You also also need to be a permanent resident by the time of your application. Otherwise, you can't apply. The whole process for a permanent residence application is a different story. So there are also other exams and so on. We'll get that maybe in a different video. But what you need to know at the moment is that in order for you to apply for a permanent residence, if you're a non-EU person, that's eight years. And if you're a EU person, that's five years. And by and large, again, it's a other complex process. But what you need to know is that if you don't have that permanent resident, and at least in my case for the EU people, it was kind of straightforward. I know that for non-EU people, it can be a bit of a harder process. If you don't have that, you can't apply for citizenship. I anecdotally, what I hear is that you need to have eight years and a new person you apply for permanent resident that might take a while and only once you have received your application proved then you can apply for citizenship so instead of being nine years it could be that you need to wait 10 or 11 years potentially two you need to show you're self-sufficient and specifically you need to show that you're not living from the state and specifically there are two programs that will bar you if you're part of these programs at the moment of applying for the citizenship and that is content help which is the lowest level of support of you know, cash payments to people that are not working and the second one is the integration payment to given to refugees so if you are have been receiving any of those those two payments for the last two years, you are barred in the meantime of applying for citizenship. You're also barred if you have received these payments for more than four months within the last five years. Now, there are other types of government benefits. So for example, the ESU, which is the government payment to students. And there's also the DAUPENG, which is the money you get when you have signed up to an ECASE, linked on that on a video over here. That will not bar you from applying for citizenship. Now, there's some asterisks you should check, you know, with your lawyer or you should check just in case before you apply. But by and large, those type of payments will not bar you from applying for citizenship. One last thing, again, broadly defined on self-sufficiency is that you need to owe no money to the state. Meaning that if you have unpaid fine, unpaid housing taxes, unpaid like income taxes directly to SCAT, if you have something that you owe to the municipality, to the region, to the country, to the government, you will be barred again from applying for citizenship. So just make sure that before you do, clean all of your books, make sure you don't owe any 
anything to the state. Three, you need to have a clean criminal record. So if you have committed a crime in Denmark, you're all but out of luck. So it's almost impossible for people that have committed a crime in Denmark to then apply for citizenship and get the citizenship. Again, there might be some exceptions, but by and large, the door is closed. That's not only the case. So for people that have not committed a crime, you could still be barred by, for example, what they call criminal behavior. And that is that if you have had fines within the last four years for more than 3,000 Danish krona, you could also be barred again until those fines expire. So for example, a lot of people have been barred now getting citizenship because, for example, speeding fines, driving the car. Or for example, I even got a fine with my bike and I was worried that, you know, that could drag me out of the, of the process. So you have been again fined for more than 3,000 in cumulative as well. Consider yourself out of luck. Again, you could be applying for the Danish citizenship again after four years. It's, we're talking about nine years and then for more, it can delay the process quite a bit. But at least the door is not closed. But this is very strict. So if you want to become a Danish citizen, just make sure that the years before you behave really, really well. And again, please don't speed with a car. Four, you need to pass a Danish language exam. Specifically, you need to pass what's called the Probe Dankstre, which is the last step in the, like all the modules do you do when you come into Denmark and try to learn a language in the official school system. Personally, I would say it's not a hard exam, especially like, again, if you have been living in Denmark for nine years, the odds are that you know people expect that you at least, it's not that you need to speak perfectly, but it's speak at least good enough to pass an exam like this that is especially not that hard. Five and last, you need to pass the Danish citizenship test. And specifically, this is a test called Info Stress Problem, which is a Danish test in Danish, again, for that you will get questions on history, society, culture from Denmark. So this test is held twice a year. In the exam, you get 40 questions as multiple choice, and you need to get 32 out of the 40 correct in order, again, to pass the exam. Personally, I would say, again, this is not a especially hard exam. Again, you have all the materials to study for them for it for free online, except the last four questions of the exam, which are on current events. So make sure you read the news and know the political parties and so on. I at least found valuable reading all these materials and understanding how the government works, the, the history of Denmark, and basically get a grounded understanding of, again, the society that will welcome you as one of them. So again, not something that is especially especially hard. One little hack for this exam is that there's basically like, the, if you look online, you can find these exams, so the past citizenship exams for the last few years, all online. So you can actually see what happened last year, what happened the year before, and you can use them as a real practice. And even like most of the questions could be like similar or reshuffled. So again, if you study past exams, you'll also be quite, quite ahead. Now, how do you apply for the citizenship? So once you have completed all these requirements, you can go and finally apply. And for this, you can do it all online. So you don't need to go to any office. You can basically do everything from the comfort of your home. So you need to go to our website, which will be linked below. And in this website, you need to put all your personal information. So your name, CPR, you name it. Like if you have been married, if you have kids, like basically all your personal information. And on top of that, attach all this documentation. So you need to attach your citizenship test scan. You need to attach your language test scan. And there are some extra requirements. Back when I applied, you also had to list down every single time you have left Denmark in the last nine years. And of course, those of you who know my travel experience know that this has been a tall order to document all that, but again, you had to do it. And at least I broke the system because I had like just so much trips that didn't fit in the options that they gave you. Specifically now, you need to have at least documented the big trips. So if you have lived Denmark for more than four weeks in one shot, okay, you need to list it down. But it's not that you, for example, if you have been to London for a weekend or you have been to Prague for a you know, party, you need to list that down as well. No, you don't need to do that. Once once you have done all this documentation online, you need to sign up with your name ID and pay the fee of, as of the moment I'm recording this video, 3,800 Danish Krona. And your, your application will be sent for processing. And then you wait. So at the moment, the processing time as of mid-2021 for Danish citizenship applications is 14 months. So the moment you apply until the moment you are sent to the next stage in the process is 14 months. In my case, it was around one year and a half. And again, once your application is processed, during the application process, you might get some questions from the authorities. I didn't myself, but I know that some people did. You might need to go to the police, explain some stuff. But again, depends on a case by case basis. But again, if you have been following the requirements and follow the law and so on, you shouldn't get into any trouble whatsoever. But once you go through all this stage and you have been sent to the next stage, the next stage is that your, your name will be included in a law that will be passed by parliament. And it's only when parliament passes this law that you can become, a, again, a Danish citizen or at least sent to a, the last stage of that process. And that is that the parliament will pass a law, one in autumn and one in spring. So usually in April and October, where they will include the list of all the people that have applied and have been accepted accepted as a you know cohort you could call it in what stage and the parliament will debate this law twice and then will vote yes or no to the law and normally they, they vote as a whole so they don't vote per person they vote as a whole package and if your name is included in the package and the law is approved then you can go to the final and last stage of the application process this last stage is that you need to go to a citizenship ceremony so this is where you need to go and swear your oath of loyalty to denmark and declare that you uphold danish values and so on and this is something that is done in each community so for example i lived in copenhagen's community and i went to the copenhagen Strathos. and in that case you need to be 
basically sign a paper where again you declare your loyalty to Denmark here a nice speech where you again like get welcome into the Danish society you get the urgency again to uphold the Danish values which again is very important and as a last step you need to do a handshake or in my case because of corona like an elbow shake with the authorities then and finally around three weeks to a month after you have again gone to the ceremony you will receive a letter in your post box saying okay here is your certificate of naturalization where it basically says okay you are now a Dane and then you can apply for example to get your passport and so on and wow that's a lot of work took me again as I said 11 years from the moment I stepped into Denmark to finally getting a Dane becoming a Dane actually 11 years and a month so that's the whole package yeah it's it's a humongous benefit let's be honest it's becoming part of a society as rich and as bad as, the, as Denmark is it's not a, it's not something that you can take it as a given it's it's a big deal and it's in a way you could say I at least I find it good that it's it's hard it's not for everyone and again I'm really happy for this if you want to become a Dane yourself I hope that this video has helped you in helping out now if you have watched this video all the way to the end and you're planning to become a Danish citizen that means that you're here for the long term and if you're here for the long term you should check out this video over here where I explain the best things about living in Denmark maybe in that video you find a few things that you don't know about Denmark and that can again make you your life a little bit better over here with that all the ways cheers